hey guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my channel if you're new and hey if you're new and haven't already please hit that subscribe button and everybody of course give my video a thumbs up and as you read by the title and probably already know i don't know what i'm gonna name this video but it's a reaction video so other than that let's just go and get into it. father and why can't they find their pops man because he's probably dead Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 horror movie conspiracy theories. Puppeteers. Mmm. Puppeteers. Pop tarts. Do you say you have pop tarts? For this list, we'll be looking at theories about horror universes, connections between films, or larger conspiracies within the movies that extend beyond the surface narrative. Keep in mind that there will be spoilers <coughs> for what actually does happen in the movies. Did you agree with any of these? Let us know in the comments below. <coughs> Number 10, the Paranormal Activity movies are real. Paranormal Activity See, that's franchise. why I don't be watching that shit. I don't even watch the shit. Everybody thought it was real footage. Well, I knew well, that was fake. That again, only this time in conspiracy theory version. <laughs> seen this one the, the theory first goes one. that the footage in the paranormal activity movies is actually genuine you see the director and the producer of the first film oren penny apparently made a deal with the demon we see or don't see on screen he filmed its hauntings and showed them to the world thereby scaring millions and increasing the demon's power in return, Pelly was obviously made a very rich man. Indeed, as of 2021's Next of Kin, the franchise has grossed just under $900 million. And that's just box office figures. Well, get over it! Number nine, I remember Michael seeing that one. is a tethered Halloween franchise and us. <laughs> Reddit to come up with the most outlandish yet surprisingly plausible theories. I've never Reddit seen that in no Michael Myers movie. The of Halloween and Us are connected. Ah, uh, Us. I haven't even seen Us. Let's watch this. Much like Adelaide, the real Michael Myers was replaced with his underground doppelganger on Halloween night. This explains why Michael doesn't speak. But wait, it gets even better. You think they kept him down here? Maybe. Look at this. What? What is it? Some sort of weird harness. In Halloween Resurrection, it's established that a large tunnel system runs just underneath the Myers house. The entire plot of Us revolves around a secret underground tunnel system. It's entirely possible <coughs> that Michael's doppelganger made its way up to the surface through the basement, just as fake Adelaide made her way up during the carnival. Also, those coveralls. Hey, that little girl has been a good act actress to uh, play like that. I'll play a Michael Myers. But them kids come around and see us dressed up in the same shit, you're gonna ruin the whole effect. I get it? The hell is wrong with you? Number eight, Peter's friend was in the cult. Hereditary. This classic from Ari Aster is about a cult that worships the demon Payman and wishes to grant his spirit a corporeal body. <laughs> Audiences are only given very I ain't never good watched this movie into before. the mysterious cult. If you have, and let me know then, in the comments. They're mostly relegated was it good? to the climax. But what if it's not just the ending? What if they were actually everywhere the whole time? One Redditor spotted something interesting. One of the men bowing at Peter's feet has long, dark hair. One of Peter's friends also has long, dark hair. I think I'm having some reaction. My throat is... This friend was probably a cult member and slipped Peter some type of herb into the weed to prepare him for the upcoming ceremony, just as Joan did for Annie. Well, How's lovely. your relationship with your son? You no, you're more fucking seven, business, man. Sarah is the killer. The descent. Oh, this yeah, that's Mr. Killer. Marshall throws she looks like she's the killer. Herbal. 
She looks like the a thriller about a group of friends who get lost spelunking, but it eventually turns into a slasher with bloodthirsty monsters. Why y'all down there in the first fucking place? I remember the these. I've seen that, and I never but understood. Like, oh, why would you monsters. take your ass down what there? Sarah was the real monster Fuck that. all along. Sarah suffers a I'm not trying to go where the sun don't shine. The movie, when her husband and daughter are killed in a car accident. Then she goes spelunking with her friends and kills them all in a descent into madness. You can get no imagination, disorientation, claustrophobia, panic attacks, paranoia, hallucinations. Characters explicitly mention the hallucinations and delusions <coughs> that spelunkers can experience. Experience. So it's entirely possible that Sarah was envisioning the crawlers when really it was just her all along. <laughs> Number six, the Torrances were subjects of MK Ultra, The Shining. Many horror theories revolve around <laughs> characters losing their minds. It helps explain the otherworldly events that occur throughout the movie. <laughs> If I hear anything, I'm an going MK that Ultra way. If I hear... For those who don't know, MK Ultra was an illegal program Linda, Linda, please, by Linda. the CIA primarily in the 50s and 60s. They attempted to brainwash test subjects through various methods of torture and by feeding them LSD. That is uh, quite a story. <coughs> it is. Oh, it's still hard for me to believe it actually happened here. But... This theory posits that Bill Watson and Stuart Ullman work for the CIA and use the Overlook during its off-season to conduct MK Ultra experiments. The Torrances are their unwilling puppets, and it leads to bizarre experiences and rapid mental deterioration. <laughs> Number five, Kurt is working with the facility, the cabin in the woods. It's hard to picture Chris Hemsworth as the bad guy, but we might have seen it without realizing. You want to spend the weekend in jail? Because we all like to check out my cousin's country home. Kurt is the one who leads the gang to the cabin. He's the only one who picks two summoning items in the basement. He takes Jules outside so that she can be the first one to die, as ordered by the facility. This is Why I never looked at it like this before? We can cover more ground that way. And I love yeah. him. Him so fine. Yeah, good idea. So fine. Really? He immediately reverses when the tunnel blows, almost as if he was expecting it to happen. Is it possible that Kurt was working with the No, he. All along? They all seen His that shit happen. Have you seen that movie? Also curious. Yeah, I did. I did wonder about that one though. Maybe he was double-crossed, but you know yeah. the rules. If we don't see a body, they're not actually dead. Maybe Here we are. a trick to make the gang think he was dead. I don't think Kurt even has a cousin. Huh. Number four, time travel. The Blair Witch Project. I would love to hear this right now. I really would. I'm but just please, trying to say go. that, you know, we have to... I know. Yeah. Rationally, say they they might they might very well go on forever compared to our footsteps. I this did hear a lot that these people and to countless fan while shooting this years. movie one involves that time they will travel. starve them the of this and do is different things and fuck with them. But in these even though Blair Witch is not we a uh, for 15 real hours movie. today, we ended up in the same place. There's no way to help you. That's your motivation. The movie's original website claimed that all the camera equipment was found under the foundation of the house. Furthermore, the promotional film, Curse of the Blair Witch, claims that the house that Heather and Mike find themselves in burned down back in the 40s. Lastly, Heather is briefly seen in the video game Blair Witch Volume 1, Rustin Parr, which takes place in 1941. All evidence points to the characters going back in time once they enter the mystical woods. When was the last time you saw us? Uh, earlier this afternoon. I'm not lying. It's been five days since we saw you. Number three, Roman was in the first screen. 
Scream. This slasher managed to make the tired slasher genre new again. It did so through some clever meta humour and the unique twist of having two killers, Billy Loomis and Stu Moore. <coughs> Surprise, Sydney. <laughs> Scream 3 reveals that this was all orchestrated by Roman Bridger. Like he was making a movie. You. This is all because of you. The director said. And direct. We don't know if this was retconned or planned from the beginning, but there are some clues that Roman was in the first Scream. A ghost face stalks Sydney and Tatum while Billy and Stu are at the video store. On the night of Casey's killing, Billy was with Sydney and Stu was supposedly with Tatum. Yeah, it was. Finally, when Ghostface appears in the grocery store, his reflection can be seen over a product called Romantica. Was that a subtle nod to Roman's inclusion? Roman? I'm gonna have to watch the latest one that came out. Roman? Number two, yeah, Kevin McAllister grew up to be Jigsaw, Home Alone, and Saw franchise. We like to picture Kevin McAllister growing up to live a happy life with his extended that family. That funny. Maybe even giving Buzz the odd brotherly handshake every now and then. But if anything, we're they should have said Buzz. This theory posits that Kevin actually grew up with serious mental problems and eventually turned into the Jigsaw killer. Yes, I'm a sick officer. Ah, fuck. The obvious connection is their shared love of traps, but it goes a little deeper than that. Kevin reacts with violence upon witnessing the pizza injustice. He gleefully torments the delivery boy with fake And thanks, he was His a kid doing all this. Malicious, and so it's a grown ass man, old man doing this. <laughs> You guys give up or you're thirsty for, for more. more? Seems like Kevin has some bottled up issues that are just waiting to be unleashed. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Samuel Loomis is in Psycho, Halloween and Psycho. Halloween is a classic, not just for what it brought to the table, but for the iconic characters that inhabit it. Maybe the best of all is Dr. Samuel Loomis, who's played to perfection by Donald Pleasance. I have the feeling you're way off on this. You have the wrong feeling. According to this theory, the character also appeared in Psycho. I am whenever it's possible. I want to see you. And under any circumstances, even respectability. Marion's boyfriend is named Sam Loomis, and it's Sam who eventually catches Norman. Maybe he was so influenced by his deeds with Norman that he Norman studied Bates. psychology, Y'all remember became Norman a Bates. psychiatrist, and turned into the Dr. Samuel Loomis, who dedicates his life to studying Michael. I met this six-year-old child with this a dumbass motherfucker, ain't he? Emotion that gave my life to study no serial killer, no killer period. Like, the fuck? Size. Yeah, he certainly aged a lot. Bro, if you don't keep that shit popping, pushing. But hey, studying serial killers for a living tends to age a man. What's the boogeyman? <laughs> Bitch, what's the boogeyman? Your brother. As a matter of fact, that was. Did you enjoy this video? These other clips from Watch. So anyways, guys, that's it for this reaction video. If you have any input or want to, you know, leave whatever you <laughs> think in the comments below, keep it cute, keep it nice, and keep it very respectful. I will delete and block you. Other than that, don't forget to give my video a thumbs up and hit that blue notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I drop a video. Until next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.